Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we'll be looking at all the different transitions in Swift UI and how we can use them. Once we're done with all the different transitions we'll then add them into a grid similar to what we did in animations in Swift UI and lazy grids in Swift UI. So what is a transition? Well whilst animations control the speed and force of an object moving in a direction, transitions actually determine how a view is inserted or deleted from the hierarchy. You can't actually just have a transition on its own. You need to make sure that you have an animation with that transition as well. So what we're going to do is create views that show off all the possible transitions in Swift UI. So let's create a new file called default animation view to kick us off. So by default, when performing transitions in Swift UI, we'll just get a fade in and out. So let's actually see how we can add this. So I've created a source of truth here within this view called is visible and this is what's going to be used to actually toggle the value of whether you can see the view on the screen or not. So let's actually add in a V stack with a button that will actually toggle our source of truth as whether you can see the view or not. So as you can see we've got a button on the screen here where we're toggling the visibility and you can see that is visible is being changed from either true or false and we're just using a new iOS 15 button styles available to us and if you want to learn more about a new iOS 15 button styles then check out my video iOS 15 button styles and materials in Swift UI. So now what we want to do is actually add in some logic to show and hide some kind of view and in this case it's going to be a rounded rectangle so let's do that now. Okay cool so what we're saying here in our v stack is that if the is visible is true, then I want you to show a rounded rectangle on the screen. So let's actually see what happens when we tap on this button. So if we tap on toggle visibility, you'll notice that it's just adding our rectangle in and there's no animation. So we're not actually seeing our transition happen here. So in order to actually see our transition, what we need to do is use our with animation block in Swift UI to modify the source of truth to say when this value changes I want you to animate this view appearing and being removed so in order to learn more about the with animation block and animations in general then just check out my video animations in Swift UI as well so now what we're going to do is to use that within our button okay cool so now let's actually test this out and as you can see our view is being toggled in and out. So let's actually just look at what we've done here. So we've said here that with our with animation block, we want to toggle the visibility of our view and you can see here that it's animated. Cool. So what other transitions do we have? Well, the next one we can do is actually explicitly set the opacity for a view. So let's do this now. So what we're going to do is create a new view called opacity animation view. So let's do that. And within our opacity, animation view this is just going to use everything that we had in this view here so i'm just going to copy all of this and just paste it within here like so okay cool so now within here if we wanted to actually specify specifically what transition we want to happen on this rounded rectangle what we need to do is use the transition modifier on our rounded rectangle so let's add that in now so below our frame we're going to say transition and then within our transition we're just going to say dot opacity so what we're saying here is that when the view is inserted and removed we want you to use a opacity transition when performing the animation so let's actually test this out in our swift UI preview and if we just hit toggle you'll see that we actually get that animation when it adds and when it removes it we're getting that opacity so what we're going to do now is actually create a grid so we can actually easily view all of our transitions so in our main content file let's create a lazy v grid to see all of these animation views in action so we just go to our content view if we just remove this text and i'll just go to type this out and break it down Okay, cool. So now what we've got here is our lazy V grid and you can see it's got two columns. So we can see our two um, animation views that we just added. And if we wanted to now, we can actually preview them and see what they look like. So you can see that they're working fine. So I actually want to do this for a lot of transitions and I don't really want to have to create another animation view. So I don't want to have to create a scale animation view, a, um, I don't know, offset animation view. 
So rather than us having to repeat ourselves multiple times, what we're going to do is actually follow some of the Swift UI, you know, principles and create a new component which allows us to actually pass in some kind of configuration for our transition that we want. So what we're going to do is actually refactor this view and instead call it animation template view. So we can do this by just simply just holding down command on your keyboard and clicking on this view and you should see an option called rename. If you click on that, you'll now see that Xcode picks up all the occurrences of this word. So what we're going to do is just rather than calling it opacity, we're just going to replace this with template. Cool. So this is going to be our template for any, you know, transition that we want to see. So then what we're going to do is in our template view, we're going to give it some properties that it can accept. So the first property it can accept is a title and then the transition. So let's add this in now. And then what we need to do is we need to actually fix our Swift UI preview because it's going to say, you know, you're missing those arguments. So let's do that now. Because we're actually passing in the title under the transition. So the title is the title that we want to show on the button and the transition is the way that we want our view to, you know, change. So what we're going to do is within our button, we're going to replace this with title. And then within our transition, we're just going to use the transition within our modifier. So now we can actually pass in any transition that we want to use. So now we just go back to our content view. We should have an error saying, oh, you know, you're missing these parameters, which is fine. So within our title, what we're going to say is we're going to call this one toggle opacity. And then within our transition, we're just going to specify that this is an opacity transition like so. So now, if we actually just run this now and actually just see what happens in our Swift UI preview, you'll see that we have the same effect. So we can actually pass in, you can easily pass in different configurations like so. So the, another transition that I wanna look at is actually looking at how we can control the direction that a view is actually added in and removed. So what we're going to do is use the move transition. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So now what we have here is we have our templates and we're just passing in the move transition. And you can see with the move transition, you're actually able to specify the edge as well. So we're just saying that we want the edge to be top and bottom leading and trailing. So let's actually see what effects we get when we do this. So if we use the top option, you'll see that our view actually comes in from the top and when it gets removed, it actually leaves be at the top as well. And it's the same with bottom, but this time it moves in from the bottom and leaves from the bottom. Leading moves in from the left and leaves from the left. And trailing moves in from the right and leaves from the right as well. So with these transitions, you can actually, you know, have some kind of like alerts that come in from the top of the screen. And then when you want to remove them, they'll automatically go up off the screen as well by using this transition. So similar to move, we also have another transition called slide. So let's actually add this in and see what happens. So now when you tap on toggle slide, you'll see that it actually slides in. So it moves in from the left hand side, like toggle leading. But when it exit, it exit on the right. So it actually exits using the trailing edge. But whilst if you look at moving leading, it actually exits on the left. So another one we can look at as well is scale. So let's actually see this. And with scale, there's actually different configurations that you can use. So what I'm going to do is add in three examples and then break down each one. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So we actually have three options here. I'm gonna go through each one. So if we actually just look at toggle scale, you'll see that when you click on it, it scales it from the center point from zero all the way up to one. And when you hit toggle, it actually scales it all the way down back to zero when, it ex when it's exiting. But with toggle scale, we actually have this other option here where we call the scale, but we actually set the scale to be 0 0.5. So this time, if we actually toggle this in, you'll see that our view actually starts from half of its size and then increases to one. And then when it wants to exit, it actually exits from one to 0 0.5. So this allows you to actually specify a specific size that you want it to start and remove itself from. And then finally, with toggle scale from top left, you can see here that this time we've added a new parameter here called top leading. So let's see what effect this has. So now when we tap on this, it actually scales it from 50% from the top left hand corner rather than from the center. And when you exit, 
it, it actually removes it from 50% to the top left hand side so you can actually specify what edge you want this to be inserted and removed from so now I actually want to add in a few more of these templates within this um, grid but we're actually going to reach the limit of our V grid in a second because you only actually have 10 views within this so what I'm going to do is actually split this up into groups to sort this out so we just actually create a group like so and then if we just copy all of this and then paste it within here and then what we're going to do is create a new group that we're just going to hold our next set of transitions that we're going to be looking at okay cool so the next one we're going to look at is actually how we can combine transitions so in order to do this, we actually need to use the combine modifier and this allows us to combine more than one transition. So let's see how we can actually do this with a slide, scale and opacity at the same time. So what I'm going to do is actually just type this out first and then break it down. So what we're saying here is we've got a combination transition and within this transition, we're saying that we want our view when it enters to when it enters the screen to slide in and then we want it to be combined with. So you can see here the combined function we're able to combine that slide with a scale so it'll also scale it from 50 percent and then again we're going to combine it with an opacity so we actually have three transitions here that is going to actually perform so let's actually add this and apply this onto our template now so i'm just going to copy this template animation at the top here because i'm lazy and then we're just going to call this combined toggle combined and then our transition here, we're going to pass in our combination transition constant, like so. Cool. So let's actually look at what this looks like. So you can see here in our grid, we have toggle combined. And if I just click on it, you'll see that it actually slides in from the left, but it actually scales it from 0 0.5 and it had an opacity. And when it exits, it exits with a 0 0.5 and it also scales it and has an opacity as well. This is really powerful when you want to create animations that have multiple you know transitions within them by simply just using this combined function to chain transitions one after another so we can actually control how a view is added onto the screen and also removed from the screen as well because right now when we add our view onto the screen and remove it it's using the same transitions but what about if we want to add it we want it to have a transition and when we remove it we want it to have a different transition as well well we can do this by using the asymmetric modifier which allows you to do that so what we're going to do is i'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down again as per if we actually look at what we've got here we have an asymmetric transition this time and within our asymmetric transition what we're saying is that we want the insertion to move in from the bottom so when it's added we want it to perform this animation from the bottom and when we remove it we actually want it to perform the trailing slide so if I just double toggle slide, we actually want it when it removes to perform this animation when it goes to the right hand side. So let's actually use this on our template animation view and see what happens. So now that we've added that in, let's actually use that on our view. So on our toggle asymmetric, let's actually tap it and you'll see that when we add it in, it actually slides it from the bottom in. And now when we remove it, it actually performs the slides removal animation. So this is really handy if you need to control specifically how you want the animation, a transition to work when you're working with your views. But you can see right now, our grid looks a bit ugly. So what I'm going to do is actually just clean this up. So the first thing we're going to do is actually clean up our template animation view. And we're just going to add in a few um, styles. So we're going to add in some padding on our button and also set a minimum height so that all of these um transitions all have the same height so let's do that now so i'm going to go inside of the template animation view and then on the button i'm just going to add a bit of padding let's actually let's give it a, some text so we can actually see it so i'm just going to give the button a bit of padding after the control size and after doing that on the actual v stack what we're going to do is set a frame and we're going to set the max width of it to be infinity so it fills up the available space on the screen and we're also going to set a minimum height of 250 as well 
and then we're going to give it a background of gray with an opacity of 0 0.1 just to give it some color like a light gray color and then finally on the background color we're going to clip it with a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 8 and a style of continuous light so cool so now if we actually go back to our grid you'll now see that it looks a lot nicer but because we've now increased the size of our items you'll notice that we're not able to scroll this and what we need to do to fix this is to simply embed our lazy v grid within a scroll view so what i'm going to do is just hold down key command on my keyboard select lazy v grid and then choose the option to embed and then we're going to just type here scroll view like so and as you can see you're able to now scroll this list but i still think this is a bit tight to the edges of the screen so on the lazy v grid what i'm just going to do is just apply some padding onto the sides of it Cool. So now, if you look very closely, you can see that we actually have eight padding horizontally. But I actually don't need to specify this eight. I could just do this. Yeah, that looks nice as well. Yeah, so now we're just applying horizontal padding onto our grid just to give it a bit of space. So you can see here that it all looks cool and it all works the same way, like so. Cool. All right. So before we actually wrap up on this video, there's one final thing that I want to do. And I wanted to show you that it's actually possible for you to combine combination and asymmetric transitions as well. So what we're just going to do is we're going to use a combination transition on the insertion and a combination transition on the removal as well. So I'm just going to type out this first and then we'll break it down. So what we're saying here is that on the first combination transition, I actually want the view when it's inserted to move from the bottom edge upwards. And then I want that to be combined with an opacity. And then what we're saying is that on the second transition, we actually want the move to move off the screen when it's removed from the bottom again. But this time, rather than use using an opacity, we want to combine this with a scale. So what should happen is it should move up from the bottom with an opacity and relieve the screen from the bottom with a scale animation. So now we need to use this with our asymmetric function here. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So as you can see now, we're actually using our insertion is using the first combination transition and our removal is using our second combination transition. So let's actually apply this within our animation template. Okay, cool. So now if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that we now have our template here. And if I actually tap on this, you'll see that it actually adds it onto the screen from the bottom and it has the opacity. But if I remove this, you'll see that it scales it out and removes it as well. So we can now actually come not only control how our views are inserted and removed, we can actually combine that with our combine function. So we can actually create some really powerful transitions quite easily in swift ui okay cool so that's everything in this video if you enjoyed this video i really appreciate it if you gave me some feedback in the comment section below also as well if you haven't already i'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel as well as hit the notification bell to get updates whenever i release a brand new video that's everything from me i'll catch you all in a bit deuces